Good morning, 11 o'clock. Can we stand to our feet as we get ready for worship? We're very glad to have you guys in the building today. Thankful that you chose this place as your place of worship for 11 o'clock a.m. What I want you to consider as we go into worship today is what is really true about you. Because as we enter into these services sometimes and we act like all everything is great and everything is wonderful, but if you just come in and tell the truth, the Lord can take that and he can mold that and he can use that to bring you from where you are to where you need to be next. So as we worship and as we praise, look for ways to say, God, here is my authentic self. It may be messy, it may be ugly, it may not be all well put together, but I'm telling you, if you put it in his hands, right, he has the ability to take it and turn it into every other thing that you can imagine. Uh, so we definitely want you to do that this morning. Lord, this morning is such an awesome time to meet you once again in your presence. We are thankful for the opportunity that we have to enter into your gates with thanksgiving, God, into your courts with praise. We're thankful that as we bring truth before you and say, Lord, this is who I am, that you will help us and you will pull us and you will mold us and you will shape us and you will give us identities, God, and remind us who we are in you. You can take that truth and do so many things with it. So as we lift our hands in truth today and as we worship you, in truth today, God, and as we come to the altar, in truth today, as we listen to the word, in truth today, we thank you that you are going to show us your hand in ways we could never imagine before. We honor you and we bless you. We thank you and we lift you high and we declare there's nobody like you. We look to you today and say, Lord, do what you want in our lives. We are ready for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Shout it out in glory, make it loud and Jesus, we shout your name. You 
That's my God, that's my shepherd, my protector, that's my king, that's my rock, that's my anchor, my defender, that's my king. this is for you. God, we just say come and have your way today. Let the atmosphere be filled with your glory. You're the same God today and the same God tomorrow. Help me see the victory you already see. Let my faith be today, what it will be tomorrow. When I see the victory you already see. the 
begin to lift up your voice. Don't wait for a next song to be sung. Just, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're holy. God, there's nobody like you. God, there's nobody like you. You reign forever. You reign forever. You reign get the glory cutting in my healing you will forevermore get the glory and in my breaking you will get the glory and in my breakthrough you will get the glory cause in my waiting you get the glory in my healing, you get the glory. Sing it out. In my breaking, you get the glory. In my breakthrough, in 
Just lift your voice and say, I need a miracle. Say it. I need a miracle. And you are the miracle maker. God of the impossible. There is no power greater. Exceeding, abundant, beyond what I could ask or think. I call on your Come on, say, I need a miracle. We'll change it all to I. And I need a miracle. You are a miracle. God of the impossible. God of the impossible. There is no power greater. Above what I could ask. Beyond what I could ask. I call on your name, Jesus. Say it again. I call on your name. 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 Jesus. Oh, Father, we call on your name today. Can you just do that? Just tell the Lord, say, Lord, we call on you today. Come on, tell him what you need today. He says, you have not because you ask not. Great opportunity to ask 
what you need. Lord, I need my marriage put back together. It's a great opportunity. Lord, I need healing in my body. It's a great opportunity. God, I need you to figure out this financial thing in my life. It's now's, the, now's the chance. I would ask. I would ask. Lord, I need this court thing to work out. It's a great time to ask. Lord, I need direction. It's a great time to ask. Come on, come on, come on. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. You should look over at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> Come on, look at him and say, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be scared. Come on, tell him and say, don't be scared. It's okay. Come on. It is such a great day. Whew. Now, I would encourage you if you have a sickness in your family or if you have whatever it is you have. And we always, we always tend to to roll into those big things like sickness and finance and well, maybe you just need a little bit of direction maybe you need, maybe you need help with a decision something that's really small and you're like man I just need to know which way I'm supposed to go so let's just do that let's just take a moment we're just going to talk to the Lord and just tell him say Lord you know what I need you know the next steps you know what you know what we need as a as a church we're so excited about the things that are coming up but we need to Lord, the Lord to bless that sensory room that wraps up tomorrow come on long awaited time we're going to get to be a blessing to so many families let me back that up God's going to get to be a blessing to so many families we get no credit I'm so excited about not not getting any glory or credit or it just don't belong to us. It all belongs to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is great and greatly to be praised. So if he can meet a need like that for all these wonderful families that have these children with different needs and diverse abilities, God can come and meet you where you are. Can I tell you, they, they've not even reached out to us and said, we need a place. But I guarantee you, I met a couple today that said, we, were, we, we just are looking for a place. And the Bible says the Lord knows what you have need of before you ever ask. But then he says you have not because you ask not. Well, hey, he knows what we have need of, and so I'm going to put it on record. I want him to know I'm asking for this out loud. You're like, well, the enemy might hear it. It's okay. He can't stop what God does. So it's okay if the enemy hears what you're saying. Hey, it just lets him know that ground's fixing to be taken back. That that thing that he's held for a long time that we've let him possess, we're going to take it back from him because it don't belong to him anyway. So, Father, we just thank you right now. Just whatever your need is, just ask him for it, Lord. We need a miracle. We, we need whatever that miracle looks like. It may just be a decision. It may not even feel like a big miracle, but a miracle is still a miracle. It's a right now thing. So we thank you for that in our lives, God. Whatever it is, whatever the need is. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Come on. We all said what? That means yes, that is true. Come on now, I love that. High five your neighbor, tell him it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. How exciting. Listen, that 9 o'clock service, I'm telling you right now, those rascals are crazy. <laughs> and we love that so much. We're so glad you're here today. I'm excited about it. It's Palm Sunday. Y'all know what that means, right? This is the start of the, the Passion Week. And I was telling the prayer team at 8.30 this morning, I said, you know, this week I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get it uh, posted out, um, uh, out on the Encounter Facebook page. Um, but, you know, tomorrow we, we have our plans of what we're going to do and those kind of things. But, but I would like to see when I go into my Monday and I'm thinking about finishing the sensory room, what Jesus was doing on the Holy Week. Right? I want to see what's going on. I know on Friday when we get up, uh, we'll just be going about our day. And that's, we celebrate that as the day that he was crucified. And then on Saturday, we'll get up. And that's the day he was um, going into hell and, and setting things in order. And taking back. He's like, hey, this belongs to me, pops. <laughs> I don't think he called the devil pops. But he's like, punk, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Uh, but you know what a side it must have been for the people that were. That he said, uh-uh, now there's a sacrifice. You come on up. Come on. I'm telling you, man, this is God. It's so good like that. So I'm excited about that. And then on Sunday, uh, we're going to celebrate that uh, 
Hey, anybody know what happens next Sunday, right? You know what we celebrate next Sunday. Resurrection. Come on now. Some people say, it's Easter Sunday. I'm like, nope, it's Resurrection Sunday at Fate here at this church. We, we, we'll celebrate the bunny. <laughs> well, let's do Easter eggs the day before, but we ain't celebrating the bunny. Anyway, we're celebrating the new life. And, and the egg is even in the Seder, in the Passover Seder. So if you don't know a lot about that, you should learn about it. It's pretty in- incredible. I am so excited because today... Uh, the Lord gave me this message, and I was like, ah, I'm so excited. I didn't get to preach it all in the first service, so hold on, okay? But the, here's the great thing. It's not like a really super long one. It's not like 10,000 sheets of notes, okay? So look at your neighbor and go, oh, thank the Lord. But I'm going to talk to you about when Jesus comes to your city. Whoa, that just felt Holy Ghost, didn't That felt good. You're like, I didn't hear it. Let me say it again. When Jesus comes to your city. Now, we know today is the day that starts the triumphal entry. A lot of people don't really even know what it was all about or how it got started. But right before all this happened, uh, we have uh, Lazarus who was dead in a tomb four days. Jesus rose him uh, from the dead. He spoke to him, Lazarus, come forth. I heard somebody say if he didn't say, Lazarus, come forth, and he had just said, come forth, that all the dead people would have came up. They'd have been like, hey, I don't know who he's talking to, but he's calling me up out of this grave. It's time to get up. And so what I found was so interesting is right after that, the Bible talks about how they, they sought to kill Lazarus, the one Jesus raised. Um, but, but can I tell you, you can't kill what God's given life. So if the Lord has given you life and he's brought you back from the dead, come on, I'm I'm talking to somebody this morning. If he brought you back from the dead and the enemy sends his minions or his people or his good Christians after you, come on, somebody. uh, You're like, I didn't know the devil had Christians. I didn't either until they talked about me the way they did. I was like, oh, those are the believers. Mm -hmm. Well, even the demons believe and tremble. Come on, somebody. Just because you have the title of Christian doesn't make you one. Just because you have the title of faithful doesn't mean you are. I'm just saying, I'm throwing it out there for you. But I know this, I know that they tried to kill him, they plot them, because Jesus got, think about this, he raised somebody, this has never happened. Nobody got up from four days of death. Matter of fact, they believed on four days it was a finality because so much stuff had happened in the body. And uh, bruising had already started to set in, the skin starts to melt. I mean, there's all kinds of graphic things, you'll just look it up. Okay, don't tap pictures. Don't do that. That's worse. Okay, but you can look it up and see that on day one, what starts happening to the body, and day two and day three. But they believed that the spirit could hover over the body until day three, and then after that, day four, it would leave, and it, it was the finality that death was actually came. So a lot of people are wondering, like, well, yeah, day three, that would have been something, but evidently they had seen a day three death before. But not a day four death. That, that hadn't happened. And so it's just like we don't really understand that crucifixion happened before Jesus. And crucifixion happened after Jesus. But the one changed the world. That guy who made crosses on that day, he didn't know that was going to be the cross that, cha- that would, people would represent or wear around their neck. He just thought he was going to work that day. No different. And so on this one, because Jesus had raised him from the dead on day four, man, it just hit the whole city. They're like, oh, my goodness. And he starts to get super famous, even, even more than he already was. I mean, throngs of people, crowds of people would follow him. And so in this whole, this whole setup he, and this popularity, they were like, we got to kill him, and then they won't believe in him because then they'll say, see, he really didn't because he, but you can't kill what God has given life. And so what's happened now, he's gotten so famous and he's fixing to come into the city. Now, think about it like this, because the people of Jerusalem, the children uh, of Israel, they, they are looking for a king to set up shop and be their king. They, they've always wanted a king. Can I tell you that? They've always wanted a king. That's how they got into slavery to begin with. They wanted a king. Well, Lord, give us a king. He's like, well, just let me be your king. No, we want a king that will rule over us. And he said, okay, here he comes, Pharaoh. 400 years. They were in captivity before Moses showed up on the scene and said, let my people go. And so they, they've always what we need a redeemer. We need somebody who's going to set up shop. And, and uh, you know, he could have come in with warriors and mighty men of valor. And he just, 
He just didn't come in the way everybody thought he was. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 21, verse 1, it says, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples. He says, and he said to them, Go into the village in front of you and immediately, how fast? Immediately, you're going to find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, okay, you just still tell them this. The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. In other words, if anybody says anything, the Lord needs them, they're going to be like, okay, good. Take them. Now, the reason this happened, it was literally to fulfill what the prophet, what was spoken of by the prophet in verse 4, saying, watch this, Say to the daughter of Zion, and behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. In verse 6, the disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. And in verse 7, they brought the donkey and the colt. Everybody say and. He didn't say or or either. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on. On them, plural, again, and he sat on plural. Now, I want you to think about that. Jesus was not overweight. It didn't, it didn't ever tell us about a fluffy Jesus in the Bible. A Jesus that would need two animals to carry him. Now, if it had been Sir Chris, <laughs> I just knighted myself, not sure why. But if it would have been me, they'd have been like, hey, you got three donkeys. <laughs> We're going to need extra to carry his extra. But Jesus didn't need that. But in order to fulfill what the prophet said, which is so unusual, but in order to fulfill what the prophet said, two. So he did two. Because he wants you to know every jot and every tittle, every T crossed and every I dotted. And this is the infallible word of the Lord. And he chose both to confirm what the prophet said. In verse 8, it says this. He starts coming into the city and most of the crowd, not all of the crowd, most of the crowd, they spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from trees, we, we palm branches, and spread them on the road. And watch this. And the crowd went before him and they also followed him and they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now, I'm reading out the English Standard Version. But if you read out the King James, you'll get something like this. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So they are crying out, this is the one we have waited for. Now, they're in the front of him. And they're behind him, and they are moving through the city, and they are excited. And the Bible says, when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, watch this, the whole city was what? They got frantic, y'all. They got excited because the Redeemer that they'd waited for for so long, he was showing up in the place. They thought this was going to be the one that sets them free from the rule of where they were right then, and this is what's going to happen. And man, it got, got so excited, they got stirred up. Have you ever seen stuff get stirred up in a crowd? If you've ever, if you've never seen anything stirred up, just just watch when somebody who's people know, let's just say a, a famous actor uh, would come through, and all of a sudden people would just throng them. They'd be like, "Oh my goodness, this is oh, my, oh wow!" And they'd get so excited. And they're, and they're so locked into the whole process. And they're just thronging them. Like, hey, who's, oh my goodness, it's, it's the one. It's the one. But, but here's what's happening. They got stirred up, the Bible says. And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus of Nazareth of Galilee. Uh, can, can I just tell you something today? When Jesus arrives, he stirs things up. He never shows up that things don't get stirred up. They're either stirred up for the good or they're stirred up for the better, but they're always stirred up. 
And you're like, well, I don't know. Sometimes it stirs up and it feels a little trouble. That's for the better. Because he's trying to get rid of the old school of thought. He's trying to get rid of the old ways you've known. Can I tell you a lot of people come to church and they come to church with old baggage they've known since whenever it was when the last time they saw God move years ago. They come to church with all these all these things of this is the way God used to do it. I'm sure he's going to do it that way now. Can I tell you for Moses, that was not the case. He told Moses, he said, strike the rock the first time. The second time, he said, speak to it. God can, 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 can literally have the same outcome, but it doesn't mean he's going to do it the same way both times. Or three times or four times. It's always going to be different. That's why I'm so amazed between the 9 and the 11 o'clock service. In the 9 o'clock service, we see it one way. In the 11 o'clock service, we see it another. But the great thing is the outcomes are the same. God moves on his people. And we love that. You should love that. But what amazes me is everywhere Jesus went, things got stirred up. Watch this, watch this. In Luke chapter 8, there's about 16 verses here. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him. Now, he's, not, he's already, this is pre Going into the city, okay? But I just want you to see when he shows up what happens. And the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting on him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus. Come on, somebody. And he was the ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet, and he begged him to come to his house. Please, God. Please, Jesus, show up at my house. You know why? For he had an only daughter about 12 years old, and she was dying. Jairus is like, I only have one daughter. She's 12. There's something about the number 12. I don't really know what it is, but, but watch this. But he went, and the multitude thronged him, and now a woman having a flow of blood for how many? Wait, 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 wait. The girl was 12. And the woman was how many years? 12. Some about 12. Who had spent all her livelihood, all she had on physicians, and she was hemorrhaging. She had an active flow of blood in her body. And the Bible says she came from behind and touched the border of his garment. The King James says the hem of his garment. And the Bible says immediately... Her flow of blood stopped. Whew. Verse 45 says, And Jesus said, Who touched me? And when all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, there are multitudes. The multitudes throng and press you. And, and you say, Who touched me? This is the same Peter, by the way, that will deny Jesus. This is the same Peter in just a minute you'll see gets put out of the house. But Jesus said, somebody touch me for I received power, perceived power leaving me. And now the woman, when she saw she wasn't hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. And she declared to him in the presence of all of the people. Which really see me and you're made an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of Of your testimony. Declared to him in the presence of all the people. The reason she had touched him. And how she was healed immediately. And he said to her. Daughter be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And while he was still speaking. Watch this. While he was still speaking. Someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house. Saying to him. Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But he was on his way to their house. Just like he was to Lazarus. You remember they came running out and she said, well, you're late. He's already been dead four days. <laughs> you think I can make him live? Come on, just tell me what you think. See, some of our situations look like they've been dead four days. And some of our situations look like the thing that's new to us and most dear to us, our child. She can't live again because now she's officially dead. That dream you have is officially dead. And Jesus says to him, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him and said, Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be made well. 
in verse 50. In verse 51, when he came to the house, he permitted no one to go in. How many went in? No one to go in the house. Watch this. Except for Peter, James, and John, those were disciples, and the mother and father of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, Do not weep. She's not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. Who was they? I never saw this before. And as I was reading, I just kept looking at it. And I was like, Peter, James, and John. And the mother and the father. They're the only ones that went in with Jesus. The Bible says in verse 53, And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But then, watch this, But he put them all, how many? Watch this. Three disciples. Peter, James, and John. The mom and the dad. They knew what death was. He put them all outside. Took her by the hand and called saying, Little girl, arise. Damsel, arise. In the King James. Watch this. 55. Then... Her spirit returned to her, and she arose immediately. And he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents, watch this, were astonished. Oh. And then he said, hey, let's keep this on the down low. I want you to think about that. That means don't tell anybody. In verse 6, he says, don't tell anybody what happened. Tell no one what happened, literally. Okay, so my daughter is dead, and now she's alive, and you don't want me to say nothing? What about all these people that are out there mourning? You don't have to say nothing to them. They know she was dead. They know what not breathing looks like. They know exactly what it looks like when someone has no longer has any life in their body. Have you ever seen somebody that their hope was gone, and they were depressed, and they didn't have any hope of life in their body? Anybody? You ever met somebody in your lifetime or a relative or somebody that the Lord has connected you with and they just lost all of their hope? They feel like they're in this hopeless state and nothing's going to turn it around for them. And some of them even want to take their own life. They're like, I have nothing else to live for. I am going to end my suffering by my own hands. Have you ever, just anybody, just raise your hand real quick. If you ever know anybody, you look on their face and they've lost hope. You, you look in their life and their life looks like they've lost hope. They, they've technically, Tracy Bell, they've taken the clothes, the open sign on their life and turned it to clothes and pulled the shades and they're sitting in a living room somewhere where it's dark and it's hopeless and they have nothing else to live for because their hope is gone. Can I tell you, when, when Jesus shows up, things change. When he arrives, when he comes into a city, he stirs things up. When, when my wife was fighting depression and, and, and she was struggling and no one knew and she was just off and I would see her at home and she would just, she would just be in a fix. And I'd, I, I'm a fixer, so I'm like, tell me how to fix it. Do you need me to buy you something? But she was struggling from the passing of her father and she was feeling hopeless and I was wanting her to feel hopeful and, and I, couldn't, I couldn't give her what I had. It didn't bother me the way that bothered her. See, she was estranged from her father for years and, and found out later on it wasn't by his doing. He wanted to spend time with her. And now she's feeling like she's lost all this time. And the enemy is just having a field day in her brain about, look, look what happened. Now you'll never have the relationship you want. But the great thing is, the Lord repaired all of that. Isn't that fantastic? God did it, but now she feels like she's missing out on something because what she was hopeful for was taken from her. So I put her on a plane, and I flew her to Montana. And we went up on a mountain. I just forgot about that till now. 
And we get up on that mountain, and there's nothing up there but other mountains and some grass. We saw mountain lions and elk. We saw a moose. We saw deer. And up on that mountain, something happened. The littlest, tiniest light of hope started to break through her dark world. Because we got in a place where we could hear from the Lord. And can I tell you, I just held her hand during the day. And we drove all over Montana. And we had the best time. And we drove forever and ever. We'd never been to Yellowstone. So we went. We saw all kinds of waterfalls. And I could see her smile start to drift back on her face. And every day it just seemed to get a little easier. And one day, Jesus showed up in the city, in this house, and God was moving. And the Holy Spirit said, tell your wife to come up here. And as she was walking down this aisle right here, but nobody's supposed to know this, Pastor. You're supposed to be put together. Your family's supposed to be perfect. We are not perfect people. We're imperfect people serving a perfect God. Who is nothing but perfection in our lives. And she came walking down that aisle. And the Holy Spirit said, now, you stretch your hand toward her before she ever gets here. And you speak against that spirit of depression. And on her way from about that fourth row right in here somewhere. I don't know how it happened. But she had her hands up like this. And I said, spirit of a depression, you've got to go. And it broke. Because when Jesus comes into a city... He stirs things up. When Jesus comes into a city, watch this. You know the first place he goes? To the temple. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And if you'll allow him from the city into the temple, man, he can change a lot of things for the better or for the good or the better or the better or the best. Even if he has to do some crazy things that you think... Let me show you this. This is so amazing. I've got to wipe my eyes so I can see it. Matthew 2, 21, verses 12 through 17. And Jesus, when he just comes into the city, watch this. He entered the temple and drove out all who sought and who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables. Wait, 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 wait. People are saying, Hosanna, blessed who he comes in the name of the Lord. He's supposed to be setting up an army. Instead, he's in the temple flipping tables. He doesn't want that stuff going on in his house. Can I tell you what he doesn't want going on in his house? If you're his house, he doesn't want depression reigning in your house. He'll turn that table. He doesn't want anxiety happening in his house. He'll flip that table. But he comes into a city first. And then he'll make his way to the temple. It happened again not so long after that when our friend Kim was diagnosed with cancer. And we were singing the same song, and I didn't even know we were singing this song today. And we were singing, We need a miracle. You are the miracle maker. And we started talking about God of the impossible. There's no power greater. And as I was sitting up there, the Holy Spirit said, you need to pray for Kim and bring the people down that want healing right now. Because see, he entered the city and began to stir things up. And we came up and we prayed over. And can I tell you what happened? Cancer died. The cancer was gone. The doctor in New York, she was the 52nd documented case in America for this type of cancer. And the doctor said, hey, we did the lab results twice. It's gone. Because Jesus comes into a city first, and then when he's allowed to come in the temple, you know what he does? I think I'll turn the tables on cancer. I think I'll overturn cancer right now. I think I'll overturn depression right now. That's just too... Wait, 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 wait. What about the... 
When the doctor told Glenn and Brenda Binion, this boy's got nodules on his vocal cords. And when we go in to take them off, it's going to keep him from being able to talk because it's going to cut his vocal box. And he will never be able to speak. And here's what you're going to need to do and all of this stuff. But something happened in a little church on a Wednesday. They brought me up for prayer. And when I went to get the surgery done, I'll never forget. I, I remember this as a kid. I was probably only like six years old. I remember them putting that little gas mask on my face, a little clear mask. And I was looking up at all of the lights. It's like you've been in a dentist office. You know what I'm talking about? That one light. But there were several of them. And they put it on my face. And I remember doing this. And I was gone. But I remember the next moment waking up. As though I it was like, where am I? No, I'm not even that. I'm in the room. My dad's sitting at the foot of the bed. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a kid. My mama's standing here like this. They had those metal bed rails. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Where they raise them up so people don't roll off. They weren't these cool plastic ones. They're cold metal. And she's looking at me like, well, come on. Come on. What you got? And I looked up at her and said, Mama, can I have some ice cream? Because Jesus showed up in the house. He showed up in the city. And they said, hey, he's too young to let him in his temple. Let me open the door and let you in, Lord. You're like, well, I don't know that it happens that way. Really? You talk to me about the four guys that unthatched the roof and lowered that man to Jesus. That's, that's why it matters who your friends are. Come on, let me say it one more time. That's why it matters who your friends are. You need friends that will get you to the foot of Jesus. You don't need friends that are popular and influencers and all this other stuff. You need friends that will unthatch a roof for your hide and lower you down where you can get what you need from the master. And so I'm telling you, something happened on, in the city he came, and then he came into that little old temple. And he said, you know what? I think I'm going to overturn the table of muteness before it ever happens. I'm going to flip it. Because one day, that little dude's going to be standing <laughs> in fake Texas. And he's going to need to preach, thus saith the Lord. And he's, the parents will think all this time, oh, it's because he's going to sing. Oh, and then he's going to write music. And all. But no, 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 no. I got a bigger plan for him. He's going to be the one. <laughs> he's going to be the one that I can count on that will do everything I say every time I say it. And he will not run from it even if it sounds crazy. Because he's crazy. And I can use the crazy ones. It's no different than on Pentecost Sunday, June the 5th of 2022. Holy Ghost is in this place. I came up. They were singing. And I was singing. I don't know what song it was, but it was just like today. I just started singing along. We need a miracle. You are a miracle maker. It's streaming. You can see it online all the way back to 2022. And I step up, and I have my notes all typed out and beautiful. They're ready to go. And they're sitting here, and I have my Bible. And the Lord said, you're not preaching that message. And I'm like, hold up. This has been five weeks in the making. This is rest in a restless world, Summer. People need to know about rest and rest. They need to know about the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. People, people work seven days a week, and God said, I want you to rest. Even God rested on the seventh day, somebody. And the Lord said, no, that's for you. This is what he told me. You're going to need to know that for what I'm about to do. I had no idea. And then the craziest thing happened, Dad. He said, tell them how I healed you. Well, bet just a day earlier, him and Jeff saw it firsthand. Matter of fact, that was Bet and Stephanie's first time at the church. They wanted to come see what was going to happen when I told everybody. I didn't even, I just figured, you know, I didn't know how I was going to tell people, but I was going to say something. And the Lord said, 
tell them how I healed you. And I said, okay. So I stepped up. I turned my notes off. And I was standing here. And I began to share. And can I tell you what happened? Jesus showed up in the city. It started happening right here in the city. It felt like the kavod, the glory of the Lord. If you've never been under a, weight, a heavy weighted blanket, you wouldn't understand. But if, but if you have, just think, about, just think about the pressure that that puts on you. It was so heavy in this building. And I began to talk about how God healed me the day before and how 15 years of pain went away. It's just gone. And as I'm telling, you know me. What am I doing? Come on, I love y'all so much. You could say it happier, though. <laughs> Crying. Oh, my Lord, you're such a ball bag. <laughs> God healed me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You live with 15 years of turning over in the middle of the night and wanting to cry. You live with 15 years of every day. You, you, you live with 15 years of... I'm going to preach this message, uh, and this has only been about six of the years or five of the years. And you, you leave the, the, the sacred desk that the Lord is so graciously let you just be a part of. This is, a, this, is not, this, is not, this is an honor to get to be up here. And so I, I go home on Sunday. My mom's fixed lunch. And I sit in a chair and can't walk. The rest of Sunday. But I could walk when I delivered the message. And I would leave. And I would sit down in a chair. And I'd try to get up to even go to the bathroom. I'd be like, oh. Have you ever stood up and your legs won't work good? Come on, some of y'all are my people. Come on, you my people. You old people. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all ain't admitting it. Y'all like, no, my legs work great all the time. But listen, I know what it don't. Because you make noises. When you get up, like, where did they come from? That noise didn't just have you weren't born with that noise. I don't see Kingston one time going ah when he gets up. He get up, everybody went kung fu. He's like, ah, ooh, ah, flip, flips around, falls on the ground. Then he just springs right back up. Sometimes he gets up and I make the noise for him. Ugh. I could never do that. I'd be like, everybody went kung fu. Uh uh, mm mm, mm mm. Bad move, bad move. Oh, pulled a hamstring. <laughs> Here I was struggling. And the Lord that morning, he walks into the city. Because the day before he visited me at that city and walked into the temple and said, hey, I think I'll take that away. What do you think? I was like, oh, my word. Can I tell you that night I can remember what we had, where we went for dinner. We went to Poncho's. Y'all like, that still exists? It's, yeah, it's in Mesquite. Probably the only one left in the world that's edible. <laughs> Here's the cool thing. You ain't got to raise the flag anymore. They just come by and say, you want something else? They got tired of looking for flags, so they just automatically stopped by. And at our table, it's a, it's a must. You just keep coming. We want them same nasty chicken flautas they've had for 20 years. <laughs> and that fake cheese. And those, chi those rellenos. I ain't going to lie to you. You're like, how'd you get off in food? Just follow me. But I'm telling you, I can remember what happened the day he came into the city and then I let him into the temple. Why do you keep saying the temple? Watch, watch. Don't you know that you are the temple of the... Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he comes in and he says, I think I'll just overturn that table of pain today. I think I'm going to free you from that. As a matter of fact, just in my brain right now, realized it was five years. And five's the number of grace. On the fifth year of being faithful over the church plant, after God already got me off of a cane, out of a wheelchair, off of a walker, off of a cane, now he decides to go ahead and heal me all the way. And we were telling a couple the other day, this leg is actually shorter than this leg. 
But can I tell you, he who began a good work is faithful to its completion. And if he took the, the pain and the cane, I think he can grow a leg. You're like, well, I don't know. If he, you listen to me. If God can create a leg, he can grow one. And I believe one day I'll get up here and you'll be like, wait a minute, he ain't wobbling like a penguin. And I may not even know that. I might just be walking around like, wait a minute, he walking. He just, he's not even limping. He's just walking normal. And all of a sudden, I'll be walking normal. I won't shift from side to side. I'll just be walking normal. And I'll have realized, you know what? This leg is as long as this one now. And, and it'll be one of those moments where I go, uh-uh. And I'll just probably just walk around for 10 minutes. And y'all be like, what's the big deal? Well, I don't know. The Lord grew his leg. That's a pretty big deal. You're like, do you believe he can do it? I absolutely believe he can do it. If I believe he can save somebody like me, I believe he can heal somebody like me. But Jesus showed up in this house, into this city. And people started coming for healing. And, the, and listen to this. Everybody that came that day, that came up here and got prayed over for healing, the last time we heard, 100% of them were healed. Because things change when Jesus shows up. He cleanses the temple. They become indignant. They're upset. What are you doing? This is the way we've been doing it. This is the way we've always done it. Can I tell you the problem with the way you've always done it? It might not be what he wanted you to do to begin with. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of pastors. And they just want what they want. They don't want God's will. They want to keep the main thing the main thing. They don't want to really lose anybody. They don't really want to change any systems. Can I tell you? That's why 7,000 churches close every year and 1,500 pastors walk away from the ministry every month. It's because their way doesn't work. That's why God sent His Son. He needed things done His way. And the moment we forget that as pastors or leaders, and we say, well, we're just going to implement what we want, we have missed it. God wants to come into the city. Can I tell you, Jesus is coming to the city. He is coming to the city. He was in this city this morning. He's still here right now. But if you don't invite him into the temple, you might say, well, I don't even know there's anything wrong. Listen, those people have been doing that so long, they don't know that anything's wrong with that. They bought and sold. It. It's just a normal thing. And Jesus said, no. You've made my house a house of den and robbers. A den of robbers and thieves. That's what you've done to my house. And on the inside of us, God wants to flip some tables. And sometimes we're like, I didn't even know that table was there. That table of unforgiveness. That table of my will over your will. Or my want over your will. Can I tell you, watch, watch what happens in, in, in verse 17. He comes into Jerusalem, and then in verse 17, here's what happens. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. He didn't even stay in Jerusalem. You remember the people in front of him, and they were Hosanna, and the people behind him, and Hosanna, and when he gets into the temple... The religious say, no, thank you. The religion and the religious can drive God from the city. That can drive Jesus from the city. Now, let me say it this way. When I think of the religious, I think of the people... That have been in the faith for years. They're opposed to change. They want the status quo. They're happy with just maintaining. They love mediocrity. Can I tell you there's nothing about Jesus that's mediocre. Not one thing. He's stopping funerals and raising dead people. He's speaking to somebody who's been dead four days to come to life. And he comes to life. He passes by those that, that have leprosy. And he says, go wash. And they're healed. Like he is, he's upsetting the apple cart everywhere he goes. But the religious, think about this. They're okay with Jesus until he begins to change their life and their traditions and their city, their church. 
Oh, well, wait a minute now. We've always had that in remembrance table. Some of y'all don't even... That's Google safe, y'all. It is a humongous piece of furniture. And in the front of it, it is, it is scribed. How about that instead of carved? It is scribed. Do this in remembrance of me. And it held all of the communion. And that's what was there. Matter of fact, all the little silver or gold back in the day before they did silver, all the gold with the little cross over the top of it, it was all in, it was just set up there on the front. And when they did communion, they, they had ushers and they had pass it out. You're like, well, Pastor Chris, when we do communion here, we do it on prayer service because then your heart's ready to receive it. We don't attach communion to the back of one of our services like, oh, by the way, we do communion. So if you want to experience communion, you should come this Saturday night. When we have prayer at 7, we're also going to do communion. And remember what the Lord did for us. On the day, he's kicking the devil's can. And then going to get up out of the grave the next morning. Come on, I love that so much. So we're going to take communion. But here's the thing. You see, and, and people, and they love idols. So, so, so when I say the word idol, think about it. Sometimes it's a red back hymnal. Sometimes, if, if you were Baptist, it's a blue hymnal, okay? <laughs> Some of you Baptists had Church of God hymnals, and you didn't even know it. Y'all were spirit-filled just by picking that thing up. Come on, somebody. Or the green one. Later on, it became a, there's a blue one and a green one and a red one. If there had been a white one, it would have represented the Spanish nation. Anyway, so. Some people think it's a style of music. Well, we only do hymns. We have a first service, and it's just full of hymns. Listen, I just want the service that, where we can touch his hymn. I don't care how it comes. I don't care if, what key are we in? A flat? E flat? Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow. Of turning with thee, thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not as thou hast been and forever will be. Great is thy faith. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morn, new mercies I. Watch this, watch this. All I have needed, and all I have need. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me. And the angels cry, oh, Holy, all creation cries, Oh, you are lifted, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing, yeah. Hear your people sing. Oh, to the King of Kings. Because you will always be as you will. You'll always be as. I felt the presence of God in both styles. It's not about a style. That is not my idol. My only reason for singing what I sing is to get in the front of the King of Kings. It is to get on my face before him and say, God, I just want to tell you, you've been grateful. You've been faithful your whole life to me, God. Great is thy faithfulness. And then I... 
just start talking about, so hear your people sing, hear your child sing how holy and magnificent you are and full of mercy and love and peace. And then I start to think about man and revelations, those seraphims and seraphims are circling and say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. The whole earth be filled with his glory. Listen, he wants to come into the city so he can get into the temple. And there's never another place he wants to be more than inside of you to make the changes he needs to make so you can live the way he always wanted you to live. But we'll let him in the city. But can I tell you, he will find a house where he's welcomed. He'll find a temple where he's welcome, where someone will host his presence. Do you remember when I said he went to Bethany? Why would he choose Bethany? What is so important about Bethany? He was welcomed in Bethany. There was no religious to say, you can't be here. You've got to go. There was, there was no one to tell him, you, we don't really want you here. You're overturning tables. We, you know, that, that didn't happen in Bethany. You know what happened in Bethany? You remember that old boy that was dead for four days that we talked about earlier? Well, him and his two sisters lived in this place, a city called Bethany. And they would welcome him in to their home. It was Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And he knew, I can go there because they have a place for me. They have made a place for me. And the Holy Spirit told me to ask you today. Have you made a place for him? Because he wants to come dwell. Not just around you in the city. He wants to make his home in your temple. Because it's in him. We live and move and have our being. And God's saying, hey, my people, they just want to know that I'm near. They want to see me move on others. And, and I, want, I want to be invited into their temple. And I really believe this because the Holy Spirit showed me. There's some of you that hadn't said, Lord, will you come on in? That Some of you are trying to put the table away before he got in. Like before he comes in, let me clean my life up. That ain't how this works. You let him in and he'll clean your life up. He'll flip the tables for you. He'll overturn them. He'll get that stuff out. Some of you don't even know what you're struggling with. You can't put two and two together. You, you hadn't seen it because you've been blinded. And the Lord said, I'll reveal it to you and show you. That you struggle so much in a relationship is because maybe, maybe you're watching things that show better relationships. And you think, well, that's the way I always wanted it. Maybe you think life was supposed to be like Cinderella. That somebody would find that slipper and, and then you're, they'd whisk you away and life would be good and there'd never be. I'm pretty sure if you followed out the rest of Cinderella, Prince Charming got in trouble a few times. It's a guy thing. It's inevitable. <laughs> but Disney and the wonderful world of fantasy cartoons and those wonderful things, Beauty and the Beast, all of those, you're like, I didn't know you were going to preach on Disney. I didn't either, but here it is. We look at all oh, they. At first, the relationship was a little bit rocky, but then they fell in love. And the rose is going to fall, and then she gives him, oh, he gets back to life, and it's so wonderful. And he never did anything wrong again. He's a man. He did stuff wrong. Facts. And women are the same way. They just mess up sometimes. Sometimes they put more trust in us than they should. <laughs> You're bad. <laughs> but here the Lord is. He wants to come into the city. He wants to fix your life. He wants to change your life. And that means he's going to come into the city. And today he did that. And we were singing. And we were worshiping. 
And now he says, hey, can I come into the temple? You're here, and you said, you know what? I don't think I've let him all the way in. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It means you're guarded. Let me say it again. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means there's some things that you don't really want, one, to give up, or two, there's sometimes you don't even know you need to give some things up. And the Lord's like, yeah, you need to get rid of this bitterness. You're like, well, how do I know if I have bitterness? Well, somebody wronged you, and when you hear their name, you thought you forgave them, but when you hear their name, it makes you a little angry. Bing, bing, bing. That's you. Okay? I'm not pointing y'all out. I'm not pointing y'all out on the front row. They're like, how did you know? You got to let it go. Let the Lord overturn that table of bitterness. Let the Lord overturn that junk in your life. Let him overturn the unforgiveness. Let him overturn that vice that always gets you. Right when you think spiritually you're doing well and something happens, you're like, why can't I break through this? The Lord wants to do that today. So they're going to sing and... um, and the angels cry, holy. And as they worship, if you would like the Lord to do that in your life, you should come. And we'll pray. And if you're like, I really don't have anything, you should be praying for the other ones that do. Because can I tell you, the Lord doesn't give a message to a city that doesn't affect the temple. Just saying. Father, you're so good to us. To the King of Kings. Holy. You will always be. Holy. Holy forever. Oh. And the angels cry. Holy, all creation grind. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. to read this and so I stopped for a minute because I want to be obedient to the Lord and I'm reading out the book of Hosea it's not something that we normally do Bible studies around or hey I think I'll read Hosea today and in this uh, the Bible's talking about Israel reaping the whirlwind but it says something it says and for my sacrificial offerings these are things they're offering to God and I'm going to explain this in just a second he says they have, it says, as for my sake, they sacrifice meat and eat it, but the Lord does not accept them. 
Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. And so a lot of times we make these sacrifices and we we give what the what we think the Lord wants in our life. And this is the way I saw it as I read it. I just um, that's out of Hosea eight and uh, verse thirteen. And he says he'll punish their sins. that They shall return to Egypt. And in verse 14 he says. For Israel has forgotten its maker. <laughs> and, it, and it goes on to wrap up. The, the last part of 14. Wraps up chapter 8 of Hosea. And what I just saw in my, in my heart. In my mind. Was these people. And, and they're offering these sacrifices of time. And maybe even monetary. Or maybe of. Well. You know, and when I say time, I mean I'm, I'm offering my sacrifice of time to come to the house of the Lord. But that's not enough. He doesn't want to just be in the city. He wants to live in the temple. Your sacrifice is just your thing. And our righteousness, the Bible says, is this filthy rags. It's the things we think God wants from us. But can I tell you? You can put all these other things together and try to make, God, I want you to have this, and I want you to have this. And you know all God really wants is time. He just wants you. If He gets you, He gets everything else. I, I found that the best way to make my wife happy is not to buy her things. It's just spend time with her. Because the more time I spend with her, the more my heart's favored towards her, and the more my heart's favored towards her, she gets stuff anyway. And can I tell you this? She, watch this. I couldn't even explain this any better. Thank you, Holy Spirit. She doesn't want the presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. She wants my presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. And so many times we sit in the house of the Lord and we just want the gifts of the Lord. The presence of the blessings and instead of the blessings we should just be wanting the blesser I think we get guilty of that I know we do or we just want a blessing we, uh, the blesser wants to come to the temple let him come so I'm going to say it one more time and then we, we will not prolong and it, our goal is not to hold this out until one person breaks through and finally comes that's not it and if you think, well, Pastor Chris, like you must have missed it today. I did not miss it. A thousand percent, I know I did not miss it. The Holy Spirit told me. This is what I want you to speak, and they'll be in the room. So I know for a million percent fact you're here, and it's not just the people online. It's like, oh, it's probably them. We're great shovelers. Oh, that's... Who's behind me? It's for Tim. Oh, that's for Tim. Oh, wait a minute. That's for Haley. It's not for me. No, nope, it's for you. That's why the Holy Spirit gave me the message. And it's His message. So if that's you, one last time, and Pastor Marlon's going to come. If you're like, you know what? I've been seeking the blessing. And I need that table of greedy overturned in my life where I don't just want what he can do for me but what but want what he's already done for me and what he's already done is more than enough you are lifted high holy 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 forever Hear your people sing, hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings, yeah, yeah.
Come on, church, be praying. Be praying. Be praying. I bet you there's other people in this house. I'm certain of it.
This is so great. I told them, I said, nobody knows why we're laughing up here. Just they, nobody knows. We're just all laughing. they like, why are they laughing? We were talking about y'all. No, I we were not. We were not doing that. We were not. Pastor Marlon, come on. Listen, Tracy and I want to tell you we love you so much. And um, um, can, can I tell you, I love this, but, and I want to say this out loud, and I know that they won't really mind, but if you're a man... And you have tons of side hustles, okay? And you're 
you're trying your best to make ends meet or you're trying to do the best by your family or you want the, the next newest car. Or you're, you're just trying to, you know, because guys, we do that. We want to make, our, if Tracy said, I've always wanted to go to Italy, I'd be like, I know right where Italy, Texas is. I know where Paris, Texas is, girl. And if I don't, Way's Apple, get me there. Come on, somebody. And she's like, no, I mean, like Italy. And I'd be like, you had me at pizza. Come on, somebody. So I want to share this with you. This is going to sound really terrible. <laughs> it's not meant to. Hopefully you can catch the analogy. But my wife is my side hustle. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not selling her out. I ain't going to do that now. I ain't crazy. But I'm just saying, she's the one I'm going to spend my energy on. Right? Because if I don't, there's some nodhead guy out there that wants to be beat to death. And he knows I'm too weak to do it, so I'll get this safety team to help me. And that way I ain't got to catch a charge and I can still preach on Sunday. Glory. And I'll testify that he swung first. Come on, don't be a liar in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Make sure you take care of the house. But let me tell you how that happens. When he's in the city and you invite him to the temple, he's going to show you these things. And it's going to be good for you. You're going to be like, oh, man, that is so good. Listen, we love you so much. Next week, an amazing week. Saturday night, 7 p.m., we're going to have prayer. We'd love for you to come join us in prayer. We're going to do communion next Saturday night as well. Uh, it's the Passion Week, and I'm going to be placing something out on the Encounter Facebook page site that I, this morning I thought, man, I wonder what Jesus was doing all week long. As we go about our day, you'll know what, what his day looked like. The day when they had the Last Supper, and he tells, he, he tells um, that old crazy uh, uh, deceiver, well, betrayer, Judas, he says, hey, go do what you've got to do. While you're sitting having dinner and enjoying life, Jesus knows what's fixing to happen. I want you to see what he's going through as we go through what we go through. And one, it won't be any comparison to what he went through. But the cool thing is, it really puts life into perspective for you. Right? Isn't that so cool? Can I tell you this week, the church, um, uh, we are, we, somebody gave us a truck. Not the one we're using for church planner. But they gave us another truck. And I called this guy, and I said, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to call you. And I was telling him about the truck. He said, no, I don't need it. And I kept thinking, Lord, I know I did not miss you. I know better. And I said, oh, we'll just take $1,000 for it. We're going to put the money and put it in the, in the, he's like, yeah, I don't need it. I was like, and I said, you ain't got a farm in it? Well, my brother has one. I said, well, ask your brother. He might need it. I, I know I was supposed to call him. I knew it. I was like, I'm supposed to call him. So I didn't think, no, I was like, well, I must have missed it. But it's so odd because it's the same voice that tells me all this other stuff. And I was like, I don't feel like I missed it. Well, a few days after, I get a text from him. He says, hey, you still got that truck? I said, yeah. And he says this, well, my son is moving here. And the Holy Spirit said, give him the truck. I said, absolutely. I didn't even like, what, Lord, you need a thousand? No, Lord, don't need no thousand dollars. He owns a cattle of a thousand hills. So he, he's, he's got this. And so I said, how old is he? And he sent back to me. Just think about this. He sent back 33. Y'all know what this week is, right? And, I'd already, and I said, well, the Lord told me to give you the truck. And he's like, what? I was like, yeah, or amen, or something. I, I can pull the text if I have it. And I just said, the truck was never meant to be ours. It was meant to be his son's who's 33. And I thought, well, man, how cool is it? So, church, we're giving away another vehicle this week. As a matter of fact, they're supposed to come pick it up tonight. As a matter of fact, come pick it up tonight. You're in the room. Come get that truck tonight. Okay? And so we have, it's free. It won't cost you a dime. And, and, and we're even going to put on there the sale price was zero. So when you go to get it registered, guess how much taxes they can you Come on, somebody. Because when you give it away, you ain't got to pay taxes. Come on, the Lord is. You say, well, they'll have to charge a value. I don't do that. I don't know. But uh, we're going we're gonna to give it away and sow it in somebody's life. And so those are some of the beautiful things that happen uh, when you give. And, oh, by the way, if y'all didn't know this, we moved the giving boxes. Yes. 
they're gone. They're no longer in the way. We can put chairs there if we need to. They're actually hung on the back wall, and they look different. They look really cool, actually. Uh, thank God for people that are smarter than me and have a cool design element to them. Pastor Marlon, you're up, buddy, and I love you, Big Sugar. I said that in the first service. They were like, what? And I love your shirt. It's cool, too. Okay, I'm going to leave now. God bless you. We love you so much. I mean, we pray that you enjoyed the service today. What I love about the fact that we go online, all the way over in Pakistan, there's a pastor that said, hey, I'm watching you guys online. So that's just awesome to be able to say while we're sitting in faith and Pastor Chris is delivering the word here, he's also talking to people way over in Pakistan. So it's absolutely amazing that we get a chance to not just do ministry here, but do ministry all over the world. If this is your first time here at Encounter Church, thank you so much for coming out. If you look in the back of the seat, you will find some connect cards. If you would grab one of those, leave those in the offering boxes after you fill them out. We just want to make sure that you don't miss anything that happens in this house. We greatly appreciate you for doing that as you go throughout the week every sunday 9 a.m and 11 a.m we invite you to come worship with us if you have teenagers sixth grade through 12th grade attached to you in any shape form or fashion 6 30 on wednesday nights we do have a great uh, teen ministry and then as pastor chris mentioned every saturday night we're here for prayer so we definitely invite you to come to those staples that do not change here in the ministry when we start thinking about this coming weekend though before we go into resurrection sunday saturday morning 10 a.m. to 1 uh, p.m. We are here. We do a great resurrection family event, and we have hundreds of people that come out every year. What we need from you all that are in the house, if you don't mind volunteering to help with setup and breakdown and prayer tables, there's a lot of stuff on the sign-in sheet back in the back. So if you'll stop on your way out, grab a spot on that sheet, and we'll see you guys this coming Saturday uh, at 10 o'clock a.m. for that great event. And if you know families in the area, bring them out, have them bring their children out as well. It's going to be a great event for them to get a chance to experience as we move into April, April is a busy month for us, just like every other month, but that very first Wednesday in April is our first family service, so we definitely invite you and your families to come out for first family uh, that Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, that Saturday, that first Saturday, the men are back for the next men's breakfast at 8 o'clock a.m. It'll be here at the church again, so we definitely invite you guys to be a part of that as well, and you'll find sign-up sheets in the lobby for that particular event. As we move into the uh, latter part of April, right in the middle of the month, if you're going to Dominican Republic, if you're interested in doing that, the deadline to sign up for that August trip is April the 15th. So you want to be sure that you get that taken care of. Talk to Dr. Mike today and he can get you set up and ready to roll if you're interested in the Dominican Republic. And then we have our next men's encounter on the 26th and 27th. There will be a sign-up sheet in the lobby starting next week. But this week, you can go to your um, uh, uh, mensencounternorth.com and you can click Dallas-Fort Worth and you can register there or you can see Bet. Bet, if you just wave your hand, you can see Bet. He can talk to you about that today as well. But it is absolutely amazing. A lot of men have gone through this and lives have been changed. So if you have not had a chance to experience that, please be sure that you get signed up for that. And then as we move into May, just, just a, a ladies put a pin in it, but in the month of May, May the 4th, that first Saturday, we have a ladies glow banquet that's going to be coming up. You'll be getting more information about that as we get closer to the date, but just put a pin in that. Be prepared for that. 10 o'clock a.m. We want to see all the ladies here for that great event. And if you just want to get a sneak peek at the scripture attached to it, it's Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. As Pastor Chris has mentioned, I already mentioned boxes have been moved as far as the giving boxes so you will find those on the walls as you exit today if you're sewing cash or check there's white envelopes in the back of the seats if you grab one of those you can do cash or check and drop those on the way out if you like electronic giving you can text a dollar amount to eight four three two one and if you're giving uh anything outside of just general tides and offering like the sensory room or the quinlan campus or the youth department things like that we have some sweatshirts and t-shirts in the lobby as well that they're going for donations if you want to sew electronically that way it's your encounter.com forward slash give that particular option gives you an option to put in the note section what that money is going toward outside of general tithes and offering. So however you choose to sow, thank you so much for partnering with us as we continue to push forward and do what the Lord is calling this ministry to do. Can we stand to our feet as we get ready to head out? A lot of great things happen in the Word today, and we hope that you were blessed, and we hope that you take that with you, that, let that overflow go with you to bless people's lives. Lord, thank you for this day, and we thank you for the time that we've had in your presence once again. Thank you for the fullness of joy we've received. Thank you for all the greatness that has come out of your presence and helped us, God, 
God, thank you for entering the city. Thank you for entering our individual temples. And now that you're here, God, cleaning us up and getting us ready, let us be people who touch the lives of others as we leave. Let us make it safe to our various destinations and every seed being sown in the house. We thank you that it's going in good ground and being used for ministry sake, God, to build the kingdom and let people know that you are able, God, to do exceeding and abundantly of all they can ask or think. As we leave the place today, God, let us never leave your presence. And as we go throughout our week this week, God, use us to do something that we never thought we'd be able to do. Use us and show us your hand in a way we've never seen before. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen. We'll see you guys again real soon.